Good morning, the internet, or whatever time of day it is for you when you're watching this. I'm Liz Frericks from Epic Every Day, and in 497 days, my husband will be turning 40, which kind of crazy. If you've watched the previous videos, you know that we decided to use this deadline as a way to sort of preempt a midlife crisis. We're going to try to do the exact same things that we would be doing, but just give ourselves more of a deadline and be super intentional with getting there. So laser focus. And this vlog is a way to work on being more laser focused. So one of my big goals is to be healthier, like to get over my autoimmune disease, to get over chronic fatigue. I've made major progress in this area. I'm no longer in and out of a wheelchair, which is awesome. I really love not being in a wheelchair. Um, but, yeah, I would just like to have energy again and to uh, fix my metabolism to the point where I can lose the weight that I've gained since I've been sick and just be generally healthier. So I thought I'd let you guys in on what exactly I'm doing to get there and hopefully share some of my health process goals, not just my end goal with you. So one of the big things that we switched about a month ago is our sleep schedule. Sleep has always been a huge deal for me. I, because of my post-traumatic stress disorder, I had nightmares pretty much every night of my life until, um, actually until my daughter was born. Um, around then I started doing some intensive trauma therapy because I didn't want to pass all my junk along to her. And I was able for the first time to sleep through the night without having nightmares and waking up screaming, all that great stuff but I wasn't sleeping well. So a year ago, a year and a half ago, we started doing meditation before bed and that has just made a huge difference. I mean, there's a bunch of other things that we did, like we made sure we had good sleep hygiene and you know, I'm very careful about making sure my magnesium is supplemented and there's a whole long list of things. But uh, so the latest thing in the end of December was that we switched to a compressed sleep schedule. So by that, I mean we're sleeping less time, which seems pretty counterintuitive, especially when you're sleep deprived and you have chronic fatigue. It feels like you need to sleep more, not less. But I've been recently watching Dr. John Bergman's videos and I've applied a couple of the things he's recommended and just found that they worked so great. So I thought I would try his sleep suggestion, which is to only sleep, well, one, one video he talks about only sleeping six hours, and another one he talks about sleeping between six and seven hours. So we decided we would try sleeping six and a half hours first, and we were exhausted and felt horrible. So then we tried it sleeping seven hours, and we'll see, we might, we might end up going back to six hours. His most recent video recommends six hours, so we'll see. We're still kicking it around. Uh, since we implemented that change, I actually have been a lot less stressed, which is awesome. I have always thought of myself as a night person. Like, I've always been a night owl. I've never been one of those people that can fall asleep right away, and I just have never really enjoyed mornings. I'm one of those people that drags myself out of bed. <laughs> So it's been a huge switch. We get up at 5.45 and it feels really early. But I mean, before we were getting up at 5.15, so 5.45 feels less early. Really, I don't think I could have made the switch if we hadn't had an experience the end of October, beginning of November, where we went to this entrepreneurial conference in California, which is two hours uh, earlier there than it is here in the Midwest. So we kept getting up at like 5.15 anyway because we were just awake. It's when our bodies were like, oh, it's morning. And I kind of handled the whole conference because I was stressed about how I was going to go since sleep is such a big issue for me. I just handled the whole thing by telling my body like, don't worry about it, you know, the time. It's not what time you think it is. And so when we were traveling, I was like, well, don't worry about it. It's, you know, two hours later in, uh, in Illinois. And then 
when we were at the conference, I was like, don't worry about it. You know, it's two hours later in Illinois. And then as we were heading home, I was like, don't worry about it. It's two hours earlier in California. Like, I just kept telling my body, you don't actually know what time it is. So it's okay. <laughs> and it seemed like it worked pretty well. Actually, it, it was really nice getting up that early. We got a lot of stuff done. We were pretty relaxed when we went into our day because the conference didn't start till nine. So being wide awake and having done all my stuff made me much more ready to engage with whatever was going on. And that's one of the biggest changes that I found in doing this consistently is that I feel awake. I mean, I don't feel awake when I very first wake up. It takes me about five minutes or something, maybe 10 minutes. Once we're actually out of bed, sometimes it takes us a little while to actually wake up enough to get out of it. But we don't always get ourselves up by 5.45. Sometimes it's more like 6.15. So, um, yeah, and that's been really great. Feeling more awake and feeling more energetic. I felt more sleepy, but I feel like I'm getting deeper sleep at night. So I think I'm getting less tired. It's hard to tell. I mean, with a lot of these natural health things, you just have to try it for a while and see how your body responds. So we'll see. So I like to split my goals up into 90 day segments. It's a lot easier than saying what's happening in 697 days and what do I need to do to get there? I can just say, what do I need to do in the next three months to get to where I want to be in 697 days? Um, <clears throat> so in my next 90 day, at the end of my next 90 day segment, I would like to have gotten our sleep all sorted out. So whether that means that we decide, oh, we're, we're not doing the compressed sleeping schedule, which I sort of don't think we're going to do because it's been so great getting up and doing our stuff. I get in my writing, my quiet time, Tabata, which is like four minutes of intense exercise that's split up into periods of rest and periods of activity, the high interval training, a type of high interval training, high intensity interval training. Um, so I get all that stuff done before my kids wake up which is amazing because then I feel less stressed and more able to just engage with what's going on with them. So I think we'll keep that. Um, other health things that we've added this year already, which is kind of crazy because it's just, I mean, it's still January, but we started doing the Wim Hof breathing. So we do that every morning. Um, and I got back into doing Tabata, the high intensity interval training, uh, which I had not done really since October. So it's been really great getting back to that. I miss running and I really enjoy it. Um, despite, I mean, I can't run on pavement or anything like that because my joints will dislocate, which is part of my autoimmune disease. But despite having to run on an ellipsis machine in my garage, I still really love it. Um, so yeah, that's some of the health stuff that we've got going on right now. We're talking about doing Whole30 before too long here and just a few other tweaks to our regular schedule. We try not to add too many things because otherwise it just gets stressful, A, and B, you have no idea which is the thing that's working. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, update on how things are going. So my Sabbath was great. It was very relaxing. I feel like I got a lot done, which sounds kind of contrary to the very relaxing, but I had a list of things because part of my Sabbath is personal development kinds of things. So um, I did extra tapping, which went really well. And I took some time to research a couple of things, like trying to find out more information about the sleep compression schedule and uh, to see if there's any way to troubleshoot just the sleepiness throughout the day. Some of you may be wondering, well, what about church? Well, I got whooping cough really badly about four years ago now. I think it's been about four years and since then my body just has not recovered my energy levels dropped way down I mean I was chair ridden I couldn't even lay down in bed without coughing so hard that I threw up for about nine months and yeah so that's it's been a process recovering from that um so at this point I am just attending church sporadically I'm hoping to switch to every other week this year 
that would be awesome. I really miss getting to go. I'm just trying to juggle things. One of the, one of our big things is that we want to move forward in a way that we're we still have margin. We're not overextending ourselves. And to me, attending church is not worth it if it's going to mean that I am, you know, if I have no energy, I spend the rest of the week in bed. I can't take care of my kids. Like there are more important things. I still make sure that I have good Christian fellowship with, you know, various people that I talk to on the phone and I, I I try to make sure I have the elements of church, even if I don't have the physical energy to actually attend church regularly, if that makes sense. So, good Sabbath. Super excited for a new week. I love Mondays. I love the beginning of the week and how amazing it is to just think that who knows what could happen this week. Everything's stretching out in front of us. So, yeah. Um... My goals for this week are to write 5,000 words on my Pride and Prejudice story and to complete the section in my Women in Ministry book on um, Sarah. That's my writing goals. And Epic Everyday Wise, I plan to set up our opt-in pages on the website and uh, finish recording the rest of our introduction class introductory class whatever it is the first class <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm up to this week and uh, I would like to focus this week on being inspired which for me means coming out of a place of fullness and love and peace and joy rather than overwhelm which is one of the things that's really important to me I try to I'm so goal-oriented that sometimes I forget that I need to do things with the right heart rather than just powering through, which is how I ended up with an autoimmune disease. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.